mean, the words kill shot, like it's an opportunity. Like we can drive the stake into the ground. We knock out the Utes and we basically secure a spot in the Pac-12 title game. If USC beats Utah, that's what it will do. So you frame this as an opportunity, not a burden. It's, I, you know, I see it, you know, I've, I've covered sports as a writer for 20 years and, you know, when, when, when athletes look at something as an opportunity, they flourish. When, when a- athletes look at something as something they have to protect or something they have to defend, you know, you're in a, you're in a posture of protection, being cautious, being reserved. You have something to lose that, that, you know, that's when performance suffers, but an opportunity, something to reach out and grab something you can claim something you can take aggressively that, that frees people up. So that built, that reinforces the notion that the pressure's all on Utah, USC, can be free. And that is exactly how this coaching staff needs to sell this game. I think, you know, when we compare Corvallis with Salt Lake City, yes, Rice Eccles is a, is a tougher environment. But the obvious thing that USC can bring into Salt Lake City is learning from the Corvallis experience when I think Caleb Williams and the offense definitely played like a unit that felt it had something to protect, something to defend, that it was that it, it had something to lose and it was worried about losing it rather than playing freely. Now, obviously there were some offensive line injuries and the team wasn't, the offense wasn't as evolved in terms of dealing with injuries at that point in the season. That's part of it, but still it it felt like a team that was worried it would lose something, or I mean the offense did. And so going into Utah, we don't have to have that mentality. This is an opportunity for that kill shot as Rick explained. Yeah, if they and can like get their it, heads in, if they can get their heads in the right spot, there that's exactly what's going to happen. To Tim's point, first of all, the road has not been kind to Pac-12 teams this year. It's only what us, USC, and I think Oregon that don't have a road loss uh, to date. Uh, but it's this, it's the bipolar story as a fan of this entire year. I want to come in with confidence, a la Rick, and then I do the reality check, a la Tim, and I go, yeah, but yeah, but this might be our first <laughs> loss. And part of that is just me bringing my expectations back down to earth. Part of it is seeing holes. Part of it is this this lack of four quarters of consistency. I have not yet seen all of it strung together. Either Caleb's down and the defense shows up or the defense, you know, lets off a little bit, you know, offense is on the gas. We they've found a way to win, which I think, by the way, has learned them mass. I mean, taught them massive lessons. They've, They've grown from every single one of these eked out moments and, and they're building on it. But every week, it's all anew. It's all fresh. Heading into Utah, you see it'll be the same way. Yeah, but, yeah, but. I want to be really confident, but I'm really nervous, but I'm really excited, but I'm not sure. And we do this schizophrenic thing as fans, which is what makes USC football so freaking amazing this year, that we're all talking about it instead of crying. And Andy, let me, let me bring those expectations back up to you. I'm not sure because I was cutting in and out. The fact that, again, well, we, we shut them we shut them out in the second half. We literally shut them out. So that means that that third quarter streak that they have going, and and obviously we know, talk about Rick said, we do have elite coaching, which is so nice that make that big word adjustments, which was that disappeared from the USC lexicon for about, you know, five, six years that we come in and and we're shutting teams out in the second half. Like uh, another really good coach we had about, you know, 15 years ago was doing all the time. And if we continue to show up in the second half and shut down you know, we see it and then they give us, we're getting everyone's best shot and they're saving the secret sauce for us. But the fact that we are starting those, those second halves out on, on a high note and shutting teams out, what is it now? Does anyone know the number? I know we've given up seven points in the third quarter all season. 62 to seven in third quarters. That's just amazing. You know what I mean? Yep. That is how you win. That my dad always told me about going into the end of the first half and how you start the second half, you get a little bookend right there. You, you, you have to do it. And the, better part of it is, is we're shutting people out in that second half so um that's where you can bring you know those expectations andy right back up again i do not want to be the bearer of doom i'm just reminding everybody we're going into rice cycles and it's it's gonna be a fight yep it's gonna and be I a rock fight on the players minds too by the way i want the players playing with that fear both what, you know, what was just said about the expectation i hope the coach is putting that opportunity in their heads but i hope they've got a little bit of fear i don't want them walking in their cocky or they could be caught way off guard. I agree completely.